Good afternoon, folks. So if you clicked on this video, you're obviously looking for some kind of tutorial on calculating your body fat with a handheld caliper. I'll leave the link in the description um, for the caliper that I'll actually use in this video where you can buy it. I'll also leave a link to an alternate description of the process um, from another video that I consider to be trustworthy, made by Mike Matthews. Within this, I can also explain the differences between qualitative experience-based data, knowledge that is based in things that we see, versus things that we can actually measure, quantify, where truth comes out by comparing the differences and the numerical values as they change over time. If you're relatively seasoned, if you've tracked your body fat percentage for a while, you can look in the mirror and you can determine, you know, if you have a good idea of what 6% body fat looks like, if you have a good idea of what you look like at 10% or higher, you can in some way appropriate, you know, where you're at at any one time. If you're a seasoned bodybuilder competitor, I'm sure you can tell, like, how far off you are from a certain body fat percentage or more directly, more concisely identify where you are um, because you simply have that breadth of experience. I have been around 7% body fat once. I have a rough idea just by looking at myself where I might be, but I cannot pinpoint anything. For me, I find more meaning in using a body fat caliper. Now, a body fat caliper is a very simple tool. I find them easy to use. I find them simple and quick. I use the AccuMeasure caliper that you can get on Amazon. And there are directions that come with this caliper. The explanation is fairly easy and it's fairly easy to follow. As long as you're following generally what the directions say and you're doing it consistently, you should be able to see changes. With this body fat caliper, basically you can either measure in inches or millimeters. Because in science we usually stick to the metric system, I always use millimeters. But it takes about a second to do. I just look from where my hip bone is and then I go up about an inch and then I pinch a skin fold at an angle. You can use either side of your body that you want. I usually use my right side just because that's what I use. It doesn't really matter from my perspective. When you're setting up the caliper, that's the trickiest part. Um, you may have to make sure that the measuring line is on the side that will be clipped, that will be moved inward, because if it's at the other side, if it's at the other end, then you're not gonna get any measurement. The button that says press, that clips into the little slot, you basically press until that thing fits in its hole and a little snap, you hear a little snap. And I do it very quickly, snap, done. I feel like that's the most accurate way. I'll do it a bunch of times, I'll do it over and over really quickly just to get an idea of where it is. You can clip multiple areas, you can do skin folds on multiple parts of your body and there's calculators online that you can feed those into to get maybe what would be considered a more accurate, a more precise measurement of what your body fat is. But I find, I honestly find this useful to just get an idea of where I am, about where I am. So I'll do a number of clips and then I'll be done. Once you have that information, once you have what your about your millimeter is, you then look at the chart where you look up what your age is and you just match up the X and Y axis and it'll tell you about what your body fat percentage is. So for me today, my body fat percentage at 29 years old with a millimeter reading of about 11 or 12 was about 12.6 or 7% body fat. That's basically how you use the caliper. Um, what I find beneficial as far as measuring on this is the comparison between just looking at yourself in the mirror and not having kind of an idea versus having a more precise idea of what's going on. I know numerically my millimeters are different and I've been consistent in how I measure. So I know, you know, there's been a change that I can actually measure, that I can quantify with numbers that I have more confidence in. That is what I think the benefit of measuring as a way of knowing. First, just relying on your experience, just rely on, relying on your senses. I think it's more raw, and I just don't trust it as much. There's power in numbers, there's power in collecting data, there's power in analyzing data. I think that's something we can teach students in science.